I think the biggest change going on at the moment within manufacturing is the advanced technologies that are starting to be brought into uh, manufacturing itself. So things like edge computing, machine learning, artificial intelligence, the analytics side of manufacturing, I think the few in the future will become by far the biggest part of manufacturing technology, um, becoming smarter, more predictive in the way that things such as maintenance um, and usage of things like energy and resources. I think that's really where the future is going to lie and where the biggest changes are going to happen in the next few years. I've grown up in the steelworks where manufacturing was um, a very analogue process, uh, lines off and on and things like that. Now, what I've noticed here today, particularly in the last few years, is a massive growth in digital um, internet, data, um, and, and from an ma asset management point of view, um, it's all about using that data to make good decisions, good decisions in manufacturing, getting the best out of your equipment, the best out of your plant, uh, and also uh, using, using that te technology to make things more sustainable. Um, so it's going to be very data driven, I think, in the future. Uh, so for, for us, we, we're in and out of different manufacturing organisations all the time, different industry verticals. Um, but I think there's, there's one consistent theme that I'm seeing going forward for the future, which is the integration of, of systems um, that, that help manufacturing organisations become more efficient and surface the, the data and the information that they, they're capturing. Uh, that's, that's the big push, I think, um, you know, to, to, to give people the, the information that, that, that they need. I think at the moment one of the biggest things is about energy usage and energy efficiency driven by the increased prices of, of energy on the global market. Um, but equally it's, it's a case I think of, of taking things from a small level, starting to look at how processes and operations are working, where energy is being used, where there's potential improvement in that process of manufacturing and then doing small scale pilots. Uh, so if it is something like energy efficiency, looking at what pressures are used maybe on a machine or where potentially savings can be made by turning things off or actually just improving the way in which it's moving, it's operating. Start small and then gradually scale that up across a machine, a production line and then gradually the factory. So take the early learning and then build on that for the future. For me, my, my, my biggest tip would be clear on what you want to measure. So the data that you take out of the machine, the data that you take out of the system, be clear what you want to do with that. You know, if it's to build greater efficiency in your production, if it's to build better efficiency and less downtime, be very clear on what data you need before you take that leap into to making the transition because once you're clear on that, you can implement the right tools, you can implement the right systems and the right platforms to be able to get the right data, usable data for, for future development as well. They need to start with something small rather than, rather than going big bang, try, trying to you know, you know, change, change the world overnight. It's, it's those small sort of baby steps with a vision and an objective to get to, get to that, that end goal, um, but, but taking it in bite-sized chunks, you'll get far more engagement from the people around you if you achieve something straight away, um, rather than taking years to, to, to get to that end goal. I was a bit unprepared for how quickly, you know, since COVID, how, how things have moved on in the digital space, uh, particularly with and, and a need for things like uh, software, management software, and how much that has moved on. I was completely unprepared for that today, so, that, so there's a lot to take away from that. Um, and also people willing to work with us uh, to, you know, to develop uh, the sustainability in those spaces. For me, I, what I've seen is um, an awful lot of, of push on the sustainability front for manufacturing. Um, the, yeah, there's, there's a lot of vendors out there that are now considering how to, to make their, their, their product um, or their service more sustainable, more environmentally friendly. And rather than it just being a, you know, a nice to have or a compliance issue, a tick box um, type of exercise, it's now becoming a business model um, the whole circular economy and, and, and how you can actually turn that into to, to an advantage, a com competitive advantage um, if you're a manufacturer. I think talking to uh, a lot of customers today, they're looking more for a one-stop solution 
Um, so you may have a particular technology, uh, which is great, but it requires somebody else's technology to integrate it or to actually bring the benefits to the, to the user. So, I mean, that's really where the partnership between Festo and Farnell fits very well because there are products that we don't do as a manufacturer which Farnell can help the customer with as well to bring together a complete solution for the manufacturing needs. The, the main one being our high accuracy non-invasive honey sensor measuring temperature within the pipe so this is a clip-on system it doesn't invade any set any part of the the pipe itself it sits on the outside and the algorithms allow it to measure the temperature of the liquid in the pipe to as much accuracy as an invasive sensor so with Hani, it allows us to be more flexible more functional with where we measure temperature within a system uh, and within pipe work um, it gives us the flexibility to be able to move it around the system to wherever it needs to be um, and along with that as well we've, we've also shown some of our uh, smart sensing capability and, and recording of how we look at barometric pressure, how we look at light sensing, how we look at CO2, uh, infrared uh, temperature sensing as well. So with these it, it allows us to be able to measure the environmental capabilities of, of a system if it's in agriculture, we could be measuring vertical farming environments and, and efficiencies of the environment that the, the growth is going into as well. So those are the core two, I suppose, products we've been here showing. We've got a model showing what we term our simplified motion series. And this is an electric uh, actuator with a built-in motor and controller. And it's designed as kind of a simple pneumatic replacement. Doesn't replace pneumatics in every application, but where we've got simple positioning end to end, we can use the simplified motion series. It's only using energy while it's, it's moving. It doesn't require big infrastructure such as compressors, pipe work, filters, and all of the associated things of a pneumatic system. So it's a great complement on many machine applications to the pneumatic solutions uh, or potentially replacing them. Just purely from the cost, but equally um, with electric solutions, you get a lot more flexibility. So we can adjust positions more easily. We can adjust speed, the dynamics of the system. The, the overall kinematic is completely different to a pneumatic solution. And it gives us so much more flexibility. With the internet of things and industry four, we talk about batch size of one. That's quite frequently one of the benefits that is spoken about. With something like a, an electric automation solution, we have the ability to adjust positioning uh, and speeds and forces very, very easily, which means if we have different products on a production line, we can compensate for those products almost on the fly without anybody noticing and without having to change anything. Thank you.